Welcome to the startup grind. What's a, with the perception that the world has of him today or that you know you see in a movie or you read from this book, what in what you saw in the early days, what what was your what what were you either impressed by or not impressed by by the young early Steve Jobs that that other people didn't get to see, you know, working with him so closely? Well, he was very uncivilized. It's like when when I first got there, after about a week, I remember uh, saying to Mike Markula, who's the chairman of the board, the adult supervision, the money guy, and the head of marketing. So he was my boss. And I remember just pointing down the hall at Steve, and I said, I said to Mike, I said, Mike, we need to do something about that. And he nodded with understanding. He pulled me into his office, and he said, look, you should have seen this guy a year ago. <laughs> He's saying he didn't know how to put the, the fork and the spoon down by a plate. You know, he didn't know how to comb his hair or wash, his, wash it. I mean, we're talking almost like uh, the, you know, the wild man from Borneo. <laughs> and um, yeah, over the years, he, he uh, gradually picked up a few, you know, uh, clues about hygiene and etiquette, etc. <clears throat> but but also just right from the beginning, uh, I mean, he's he's just a incredible force of nature. You know, I, I don't really have any doubt that in 500 years, he's the one guy from our generation that that history will People talk are still about, talking about that. You know, because of the impact that he had, he had an obvious gift of really understanding better than anybody else how to shape technology for human use. Yeah. I read somewhere that he asked you one time, have you ever taken LSD? Is that right? Yeah, this is uh, kind of a uh, running joke with him because he was a big fan of LSD. Right. He was, he was pretty convinced that it had really you know, uh, opened him up. And uh, I was often a thorn in his side. But you know, he, he always had a high degree of respect for anybody that he thought was equal to him. And he really wanted to be surrounded by, by people that were really talented. But Sometimes he wanted to win an argument, and you know people like that are not always going to uh, just be uh, pushed around. So, so we we had a I think a healthy amount of mutual respect, and you know we were uh, similar. You're about in the same age. age, right? Yeah, very similar in age. So you know we had a lot of kind of camaraderie. Uh, like there was one time where he pulled me into his office, and he wanted to ask me about the older woman that I was then dating. And it was because <laughs> he had started dating Joan Baez. And he wanted some <laughs> pointers. How much <laughs> older? Like quite old. I mean you. Kind of like cougar older, or was she just a little <laughs> bit? This is not something I read about, so <laughs> this is interesting. Well, it's all kind of relative. I mean, I was it was in my early twenties, and you know, she, I think she was closer to thirty. So yeah, Kay. that seemed pretty old. Good for you. <laughs> uh, I don't remember how old you could, uh, Joan Baez is still alive. You can look it up. Sure, how old she was. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of personal stuff that would go on uh, with Steve. At any rate. Uh, I was always in the room when any important discussion or decision was being made, <clears throat> and I was often voicing a point of view that wasn't identical to Steve's. I mean, mm. for example, he was really convinced the Mac could launch with 64 kilobytes of memory. A lot of the stories say that he thought it could be 128. No, he thought it could be 64. Mm. And, and after a while, even he and his team realized, yeah, that's not going to fly, and so it went up to 128. But uh, I kept bugging him, saying, it's never going to work at 128. Hmm. You know, you, you need at least 256, probably 512. Uh, it, that was the kind of stuff that we would argue about. Yeah. And he would try to uh, justify more resource and attention to what projects he was advocating by essentially misleading people about what price points he could add and, you know, stuff like that. So I was a bit of a thorn in his side. So this time where he, he, he came into my office and he, he just looked at me and said, hey, Tripp, um, have you ever taken LSD? I go, no. I thought so. <laughs> and then he walks away. And I, and I know what that meant was, ah, I was just in this meeting, and they won't give me what we want because somebody, you said, good day, and if you had just taken LSD, <laughs> would you have this problem? 